From America's farm to fork capital and some of the richest farmland in the world, it's time for What's in Season with Michael Marks. Hey, thank you for joining us. Welcome to this month's edition of What's in Season with Michael Marks. I love August. I know the, the dog days of summer, hot August nights, and there's so much going on in August, starting to get kids back to school. But when it comes to produce, it's all about melons, the wonderful world of melons. And we're gonna do a masterclass today, a masterclass on all the different varieties of melons that you find in the produce market these days. Also, Mandy Bottoms is with us from Ag in the Classroom. Kids are starting to think about heading back to school, so we're gonna do a California trail mix. That's right, a California trail mix using wonderful California products. Can't wait to show you that. Uh, plus, uh, Dr. Chelsea Zarkon is with us, and she's gonna do uh, a smoothie that she did for Martha Stewart. In fact, it appeared in Martha Stewart's magazine. So she's gonna do a, a very healthy smoothie that you're gonna love. Adam Peckle, Chef Adam Peckle is also gonna be here cooking up something summery today. So let's talk melons. When most people think of melons, they think of watermelon, cantaloupe, and honeydew. And yes, that does account for about 85% of all the melons. But check this out. Look at all of these different varieties of melons. Now we can put melons in a couple different categories. Any melon that has what I call a net on it. This is a net. Uh, any melon that has a net. It's in the musk melon family, and that's what we call it. It is a musk melon. So I can teach you actually how to pick out a melon in 10 seconds or less. When it's a musk melon, 10 seconds or less. Now, when you buy a five pound sugar, right? That little tiny bag, five pound sugar, and you pick it up. Oh my goodness, it's heavy, isn't it? Why? Sugar is heavy. So when you pick out a melon, the very first thing I want you to do, pick it up. It better be heavy for its size. It better feel like a five pound bag of sugar in your hand. If it does, probably gonna be a lot of sugar in there. Now when it comes to musk melons, what does the word musk mean? That's right, strong aroma. So pick it up, it's heavy, smell it. Does it have a strong aroma? If it does not have a strong aroma, put it down and find another melon. So when it comes to musk melons, that's one of the easiest ways to pick out a musk melon. But look at all these other melons here. Uh, these are not musk melons. They have, no, they have no net on them. So how do you pick these out? Very simply. Uh, first of all, when you pick them up, again, sugar. It better be heavy for its size. Second thing, look at the color. The color had better be rich, a very rich color. In fact, richer the color, the richer the flavor. So that's what I'm looking for. Now, I just have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different varieties of melons here today. There are more. I don't have a cassava melon. I don't have a Crenshaw melon. Oh, my mom's favorite melon, a Crenshaw, known as the king of melons, because they used to be, be quite large, a cassava melon. But I do have a couple melons here quite old. This is called a Santa Claus melon. It's one of the older melons. Uh, they call it a Santa Claus because this is one of the oldest melons. Uh, and it usually is still in the market at Christmas time. That's right, so we call it a Santa Claus melon. One of my favorites. You gotta put a bib on when you eat this thing because it's so juicy. Uh, it really, you gotta put a bib on for this thing. It is so sweet and so juicy, I love it. One of my other favorite melons is right here. It's called a canary. Now they have new canaries. Most canary melons are, are football shaped, but this is a canary melon that is more round. Uh, it, and it, yes, it came from the Canary Islands. Uh, and it's yellow, like a canary bird. Again, one of my favorite melons. It's an old style melon, but you will fall in love with this melon. Uh, this is one of the newest melons. Take a look at this, oh my goodness. Uh, this melon here is called a Picasso melon. It's, this is the newest melon on the market. They call it Picasso. What was Picasso well known for? Yes, he was a painter watercolor painter, very famous for that. And it looks like there's watercolor. Somebody painted watercolors on it. So it's called a Picasso melon. My favorite melon of all time is right here. This is called a Charlin melon. If you've never had a Charlin melon, I suggest go out, go on a melon adventure, 
Try different varieties, but you've got to try a Charlotte melon. The Charlotte melon originated in Persia. There is a very famous actress who was in France filming a film back in the 1980s. And every morning she ate a particular melon. And every morning she said, wow, that's the best melon I've ever eaten. So she brought back with her some of the seeds. Now, please don't do that. The USDA and the California Department of Food and Ag, they don't like you bringing seeds from other countries. But she brought these seeds in. She took them to a, a friend of hers in Florida who was a farmer and said, will you grow these? And uh, the, the farmer asked, well, what's the name of this melon? She showed him the name of the melon. It's like 20 letters in it. it. came from Persia, right? So he renamed the melon after his two daughters, Sharon and Lynn. So that's why we have a Charlin melon today. It is one of the most difficult melons to grow because it's so heavy. Every day, the farmer has to go into the field and turn it one quarter turn so that it doesn't get a flat bottom. Every day, another one quarter turn. They also pull the leaves over it to keep it from getting sunburned. So go on a melon adventure, try a different variety of melon. Coming up, more on melons. How do you cut a melon? I'll tell you coming right up. Well, I'm a little bit giddy here today. Why am I giddy? New crop summer Bartlett pears are indeed here. Take a look at these gorgeous Bartlett pears. A couple things about Bartlett pears I wanted to share with you. First of all, a Bartlett pear is a climacteric fruit, which means you will never ever find a tree ripened pear. They must be picked first before they ripen. So you, it, this is first of the season, which means you need to be a little bit patient with your pears and allow them to ripen properly. Second thing, if you notice, there's a big old thick stem on here. So when you are buying your Bartlett pears and you've got your bag, don't just drop them in there because if you drop them in there, that big old stem is gonna bruise the other pears. So please just place them gently in that bag and treat them like fine china. So how in the world do you store your melons? First of all, keep your melons out at room temperature, cover them, make sure they're covered. And you wanna make sure they're covered so they're not left out in the open air. Julia Child was exactly correct. The best melon is always served at room temperature. So how in the world do you cut a melon? Uh, we're gonna cut off the North Pole and we're gonna cut off the South Pole. Now we're gonna take the top third of our knife, go right on around, and we're going to take the rind off. This is the same thing you would do with any melon. This is the same thing you'd do with an orange, the same thing you would do with a pineapple. You go right on around, take off the rind. That's just the simplest thing to do. Let's get rid of this right here. There you go. And now we're gonna cut this in half. And inside, oh, take a look at that inside. Uh, now we're gonna just scoop those out just like so. Take a look at this. Take those out, and there's a couple things you can do once the seeds are out. You can cube it, but oh, you can put some vanilla ice cream right in there. Or here's what I love to do. Take this, nice thin slices. This is what they do in the fancy resorts and hotels, right? Nice thin slices, just like this. And then what you do, uh, very simple, yes, you just fan it out. Put that on a tray, a meat tray, whatever you want. That is how you cut a melon. Coming up, Mandy Bottoms is in the house, California Trail Mix. Don't go away. Well, thanks for staying with us. What's in season with Michael Marks? I tell everybody all the time, if you stay with us for 30 minutes, you're gonna learn so much in 30 minutes that most people never learn in a lifetime. By the way, you know, before we cut a melon, the first thing you need to do, and I had already done that, you wash a melon before you cut it, okay? I don't know if you know this, let me give you a secret. Melons grow in dirt. So please wash the melons before you cut them. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited today because we have Mandy Bottoms with us from Ag in the Classroom. And when you told me what you're gonna do, I got a little bit giddy about that because I love trail mix. Yeah. So you're doing a California trail mix. This, what makes it California? This trail mix features all products grown here in California. And not just grown here, but we produce a lot of it for the whole nation. So um, you might not know that August 31st is National Trail Mix Day. Who knew that? 
Now we know. And in California, we produce more than 400 different agriculture products. So when you're putting together a trail mix, there's a lot to choose from. That's we're right. Lucky. Everything from apples to zucchini and everything in between, right? Yes. So I brought some things and I'll show you. Maybe we can talk a little bit about them. And um, the first thing we're going to add is about a cup of almonds. Okay. Almonds. Uh, we grow what? Almost 100% of all the almonds, right? We do. And my family actually are almond growers too. So it's fun. We, these are from our orchard. So not this year, last year. Not a time for harvest. And you may not have known this, but almonds, the number one agricultural commodity in California today. We export more almonds all around the world. We do. And so we add those. I like doing a bag because if you're doing this with kids, they can shake it up to help mix it. So I'm um, putting it in a bag. Then we have pistachio. <sighs> Thank goodness California started. You know, I hated to go to Iran for all of our pistachios and they were always ugly, but now California. We produce our own. That's and right. For the whole nation. So um, not for the whole world necessarily, but for the whole US, we produce a lot of the pistachios. These are out of shell. You can also buy them with the shells on. Oh, that's a fun thing. Get your kids or grandkids, right? Uh, down out in the garage and have them shell the pistachios. Yeah, they love to shell them and they come cracked so they're a little bit easy to get started. Yeah. Um, then we have a couple other items here. We have some uh, dried figs. So I bought these, they actually come in, I mean, they look just like a fig, right? right? Straight from the tree, just dried. And you can chop them up and put them in a bowl and have your kids add those. Another one, California produces almost all of the figs in the whole nation. And, and the main variety is called a what? A black mission yes. fig, because uh, Father Sarah, when he started creating all of the missions here in California, uh, he, put, uh, mi he put figs at the four corners of the, of, the, uh, of the mission. So that's why we call them a black mission fig. That's right, and they're easy to find at your grocery store, which is nice too, abundant in California. And then our, another top crop is dairy. So not a fruit or vegetable, but a very important commodity here in California. We're adding some yogurt chips, um, so we're adding some dairy into the mix. And then I brought a few other things. You know, you can kind of add yours. We have some, some California-grown raisins. Another one that we produce almost 100% for the whole nation. That's right. And we have some apricots. My favorite. Yeah. I love dried apricots. In fact, when I got married to my beautiful and lovely wife, Julie, we had big old dried apricots dipped in white chocolate. Oh, that's nice. It's beautiful. Hopefully we'll get a similar thing with the yogurts, yogurt in here. Now, I'm not measuring. I did bring some measuring cups. This is a great, for the educational activity, you can have your child, you know, helping you scoop and measure, and you're talking about fractions, which happens in the kitchen, so it's a great connection to, you know, keep the learning going. I like that idea. start school again. And then we also have some freeze-dried strawberries. California produces about 90% yes. of the nation's strawberries. Florida grows a few, but we grow the best. We do. Um, so we put those in there, and then once you have your ingredients in the bag, you can seal it up, and you shake it around and then you have your trail mix ready to go now i wouldn't advise keeping this over a long period of time because i think you know the freeze dried will get soggy and there's different textures but great heading out for a picnic you can pack this with you and enjoy i, it. I love the idea and you know if you have two or three kids or grandkids you know get a buffet of items out there and have the kids make their own trail mix right that's right and at ag in the classroom we're all about helping parents teachers educators wherever make it a little bit easier to teach their kids about agriculture. So as they're going down the line, you can help tell them about the different commodities or older kids can even research their own. Like what would be good in a California trail mix? And they can go online and figure out. I love it. Top Where can products. we learn more about ag in the classroom? It's easy. It's learnaboutag.org. So it's easy to remember if you go there, we have many resources for teachers as well as this activity is available. And homeschoolers, and homeschoolers. they're teachers too, right? And grandparents and uh -huh. parents and all there's many different ways you can educate so we honor all of this. Mandy thank you so much for being with us just for kids I love doing a segment just for kids hey coming up the doctor is in the house Dr. Chelsea is Archon we're gonna do a smoothie just for you don't go away here she is, doctor is in the house, Dr. Chelsea Zarkon. I'm so glad you're with me today. Hot August nights, dog days of summer. It is so hot outside. You're doing smoothies today. Tell me about these smoothies. First of all, you've published some of these, right? Yeah, so I've been in a couple magazine features publishing different types of smoothie recipes. And I love smoothies because they're such a convenient and fun way to get in digestible nutrition. They are also great for hiding things. So we're gonna do a little bit of that today. Hiding, hiding what? So I like to use smoothies in patients who 
don't have a big appetite, but we want to get nutrition in so we can pack it in a smoothie. Uh, moms who want to get fruits and vegetables into their kiddos, but they need to kind of hide it in something. The way of sneaking it smoothie. in. That's right. Or sometimes I'll have people who need nutritional supplementation, but they don't like the way it tastes. They don't want to swallow it. We just open it. We put it in a smoothie. So okay. lots of nutrients can go in a smoothie. I like that. I yeah. like that. And in the summertime, like, like August, my goodness, it's just so easy to... To drink, my goodness. I drink one every day. All right, yeah. very good. So uh, how are we going to start this smoothie? Okay, so today we're going to do a chocolate smoothie. Ooh. Yes, because who doesn't like chocolate? I love chocolate. Yeah, and it, you can customize it for your flavor preferences. I'm going to start with some ingredients that you're probably familiar with seeing in a smoothie. Okay. And then we're going to blindfold you. What? What? Yes. Okay. And we're okay. going to put in some ingredients that you might not be familiar with seeing in a smoothie. Okay. And then we're going to have you taste test it. Okay. So I am going to start with the chocolate. Cocoa powder is actually a really good source of antioxidants, which I feel like we talk about all the time on this show. It's also a great source of magnesium. Um, magnesium is required for 300 biochemical pathways in your body. So food is medicine right there. And it tastes good. And it tastes good. We're going to put in some frozen fruit, a cup of that. That was a quarter cup of cocoa powder. Frozen fruit, you can do any fruit that you want. A lot of times when I'm doing this for kiddos, we'll do frozen bananas and add a little peanut butter. I'm using strawberries today. Um, we're going to do some, this is a just a almond milk, it doesn't have any glyphosates, it's filtered water and almonds, no gums, no sugar, but you okay. can use whatever dairy product you like. We just talked about almonds being from California, so appropriate. Um, I'm going to use some maple syrup. That was a cup and a half almond milk. This is I approve of I maple knew you would syrup. Like that. This is two tablespoons, but I did a generous two tablespoons just for you. So Thank that's going to bump the sweetener up just a little bit. Um, and then this is a vanilla protein powder. I'm going to add it at the end because the one that okay. I'm using is a bone broth protein powder, which makes it really creamy. But if we add it too soon, it'll get clumpy. So I like everything there. I know. So okay. let's add some things that you like, but maybe have never put in a smoothie. So I'm going to okay. have you put on this very official blindfold. Oh my goodness, here we yeah. go. Blindfold, here you go. You need some assistance. There we go. All right, so the first okay. thing that I'm going to put in, this is a key ingredient in all of my smoothies. This is my favorite fruit. It packs a ton of nutritional value and also helps stabilize blood sugar. Another getting a lot fruit, of is it peaches? You're going to have to wait and see. Okay. All right. This next ingredient, uh, this is about a quarter cup, and this adds a little bit of fiber. It has a really neutral flavor profile, and it's a way that we can just get our nutrients up in a smoothie. And finally, we have an ingredient that we have talked about on this show quite a few times before. Just a cup of it a day gives you an anti-cancer dose. Uh, so let's see if you remember your previous episodes. Okay. And then we're going to add in, I'm going to add in about a half a cup of ice. I really like a creamy smoothie. Everybody's doing these creamy, high-protein drinks these days. You can just make it in a blender at home. And then if you want to do mix-ins, I like to take this in a more adult direction and top mine off with sea salt and hazelnuts. But we'll leave that off today. Okay. All right, we're going to blend. <laughs> Can I see now? You can see. So look at that. Oh, I better. Thick and don't go anywhere. <laughs> Got to get a good last for you. There we go. Here we go. All right. Look well, at that chocolate you don't goodness. Have to taste test it for us and let us know if this is your produce man approved. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And then I'll tell you what's in it. Mmm. That is so yummy. That chocolate is so good in there. Chocolate for breakfast. Do you want to know what else is in there? Okay, it? tell me what else We've is got in here. Cauliflower. Huh? Yes. Avocado, which is where you get that creamy texture mm -hmm. from. Yep. And a cup of leafy greens. You put leafy greens in here? I did. You tricked me, Dr. Yeah, and Chelsea Zarkon. Right? Oh, my goodness. Oh, you're going to fall in love with that. Uh, and we'll probably put up that recipe somewhere online so we can get it for you. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Chelsea Zarkon, for being with us. Coming up, the chef is in the house. Don't go anywhere. One of my favorite segments of the show, What's in Season with Michael Marks. Thanks for staying with us. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the show. Chef Adam Peckel is in the house. Oh my goodness. Uh, when you told me what you were going to be making. You know, peaches, it's that time of year. It's that time. Okay, what are we doing with peaches Well, so, um, like most chefs, 
desserts are not our thing. I, I usually pay someone else to do it for me, but there's a few in the repertoire that I can pull out all by myself, and this is one of them. Okay. Uh, some call it a crostata, the Italians, crostata, okay. or the French call it a galette. It's basically a real simple little pie. Um, we're working with peaches, uh, just like you would for any pie, just a little bit of uh, sugar, a pinch of salt, maybe a little lemon juice. And then just I, let that sit. Yep, and I've got, I've got some nice, nice real Ooh. vanilla. You can use the extract, but I had vanilla bean, so I just put a little vanilla bean in there. And then I've just got a real simple uh, butter pastry. Like just, and you just, keep just the skin on. Dough. Skin on, yeah, absolutely. We, of course, washed them off. Um, so I'm going to make the pastry. But speaking of that, what's up with peach fuzz? I don't, why are peaches fuzzy? Peaches fuzz, yeah, peaches have fuzz, nectarines don't. That's because it is a dominant gene and peaches have that dominant gene, and it, when it rains, the rain just dribbles off the peaches. That's what makes nectarines so difficult when it rains. There's no that? fuzz on it, oh, and so they ruin very easily. That's wild. So again, I've just got this nice uh, round piece. So I, I, I rolled dough out, I cut it into a round, rolled out a little bit further, and then now we've got our peaches. Now, would you get mad if I used nectarines? No, you could use anything. You can use, uh, Nectarines. Would you get mad if I use white flesh peaches? Absolutely not. Okay. You can use okay. apples. You could use pears. You could use literally anything you put in a pie. You can. I mean, this is really just a simple little pie. And what's cool about it, you can make a big one. We make little ones for the restaurants. And so that's what I'm going to do here. And it, it comes off a little more fancier. And so we got a, just a nice, almost like one peach worth of fruit in there. And I'm just so gonna, this really is a little mini fold pie. It up, and I'm just going to fold it over a little bit. I'm gonna fold it over a little bit. No it's way. Just, I'm, this, is, this is not hard. Again, this is why Chef, who's not good at desserts, can make a cool and kind of fancy dessert. Like, I mean, <laughs> here we are, here we are. Yes. And, and that's where it kind of gets started. And we'll move it over to our little, uh, a, a, a dish with a, uh, some parchment paper, oh, a little you... egg wash, just like you do for just a lot of baked goods. Oh, a little egg wash, shine right? it up, right? Shine it up. It adds, it helps brown, and it also helps the little extra sugar that I borrowed from my daughter. We've got a little uh, pink, pink fun little sugar, little we'll Barbie just, sugar we'll here. A little, little Barbie sugar. Use it just again. You don't want to just use regular sugar. You can, uh, I don't even know what they call this kind of sugar. It's just a little, little thicker, chunkier, and the pink kind of works. And then we bake this at really hot, 450, almost even 500 at times, depending on your oven, for 12 to 15 minutes. That's it? 12 That's to it. 15 minutes? It's so fast. Again, we don't want to overcook the fruit. It's, uh, it's a nice, delicate pastry. And then here we go. We pop in the oven. And then somehow, my oh. one turns into five. I don't know how that happens. Magic television. You made five of them for us. Well, you know, we got hungry people around here. Ooh, ice cream. We need ice cream. Oh, oh, oh I got the a, ice cream. A or a crostata without a little bit of ice cream. There's the ice cream. Serve, oh, them, oh. serve them warm right out of the oven. And then a little, you know, vanilla, whatever your favorite flavor. And you're off to the races. It's that, that is, simple. That is gorgeous. And restaurant worthy. So impress your friends with this, with this recipe right there. This would be a great one for the kids as well. I think 100%. you would teach oh, the kids oh, the, to do absolutely. this, right? Absolutely. 100%. Oh, this is awesome. Uh, eat your heart out. <laughs> I am going to get a fork. <laughs> Thank yeah, you, yeah, Chef Adam absolutely. Pickle. Absolutely. My pleasure. And thanks once again for joining us here on What's in Season with uh, Michael March, your produce man. Join us next month. We'll see you then. Oh, where's the fork? Thank you.